Hi, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining today's Indeed Jobcast on interviewing. So before we begin, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. First, you are in listen-only mode, so you can hear us, but we can't hear you. Second, we are recording, and you'll be able to view this webinar on demand in a week or so on YouTube, and we'll also send you that link. And finally, ask questions. You can post on the Indeed community discussion using the link here, and our team of job search guides will be answering. We have a lot to cover in this quick webinar, uh, a brief overview of interviewing, including a look at different types of interviews, followed by steps you can take to ace the interview and time for questions at the end. I do want to take a moment to acknowledge that the current situation we're in is not business as usual. Interviewing is already challenging, but with both you and employers trying to take steps in the best interest of public health, it's even more complicated. If you want information specifically about navigating the job search amid COVID-19, you can visit our resources page at go.indeed.com slash COVID-19 resources. We'll also be holding a special webinar on that topic on March 31st. Overall, it's just important that you know that you're not alone and we're here to help you. That said, now I'd like to introduce a couple of people. First, today's presenter, Taylor Meadows. As an Indeed evangelist, Taylor uses his 10 plus years of experience to educate employers and job seekers about what it means to find joy and meaning through work, leveraging Indeed's data and insights to create powerful strategies for building and fostering effective teams. Next, Nikki Stats, who will be providing a recruiter's perspective when we answer your questions. As an Indeed recruiter, Nikki champions Indeed's culture by working tirelessly to attract and retain the best people for Indeed. And lastly, that's me, Brandy Cohn. As part of Indeed's Job Seeker Experience team, I work to spread Indeed's mission of helping people get jobs by building and scaling job seeker support programs like this Indeed Jobcast. So with that, let's jump in. Take it away, Taylor. Hi, everyone. Um, it is so lovely to be here with you um, today. Uh, I know that we are in the midst of uncharted territory right now. Um, I know that a lot of people are experiencing uncertainty. Um, and we've been kind of inundated with bad news, but the good news is that over the next 30 minutes or so, um, my goal is to distract you from all of that, um, give you some insight as how you can show up as a desirable candidate to whatever company that you're applying for, and ultimately let you know that Indeed is here to help you along the way. Um, you know, uh, this brings me back to um, the turning point that I felt that I had in my career in knowing that this time we have right now could be a really, precious period of time to really look to the future and understand what could be in store for you. Um, you know, back in 2009, during the height of the recession, uh, it's right when I graduated from school and I had just moved myself across the country uh, from Columbus, Ohio, where I'm from, down to Austin, Texas. Um, and I remember it being uh, a really tough time to find work, right? Markets were down, people were really scared, um, and it was really hard to get a call back. And, and Ultimately, I kind of just felt like I was applying for anything, right? Because um, at the time I was waiting tables, but I wanted to transition into more of a marketing role where I felt like my, my actual skill sets laid. And ultimately, it was the advice of my dad that changed my, my outlook on, on, on my career and what I wanted to do. And I wanted to share that with you today. You know, he said, instead of just arbitrarily applying for jobs because they're available, why don't you consider organizations or companies that you've had a personal experience with that have been meaningful for you? Or what's a great customer service experience you've had that left an impression on you? Because why wouldn't you wanna be a part of that? And I actually was able to recall earlier that week, I dropped my computer off at the Genius Bar, right? I had that little old white MacBook, my CD drive went out on it, I had run it to death. And these people at the bar really went out of their way to take care of me. And I could tell that they really had a lot of love for their job. And I thought I would love to be a part of that. but. You know, I didn't have a huge technical background and I really didn't think that I could get hired at a company like Apple, right? Because I had, I couldn't even get a call back from the hotel down the street. But you know, my dad said to me, it's 
Apple strikes me as the type of company, right, that would not necessarily just hire people with technical backgrounds, but people who liked to interact with people and show passion for the product. And lo and behold, that's exactly what I did. I applied for a sales position uh, in one of their retail stores part-time. And honestly, it was the best decision I've ever made for myself. I never looked at that position as just working in a retail store. That was me being the face of one of the world's most reputable brands. And I leveraged that just getting in the door somewhere that I respected to set the tone for myself. So what I would love for you to do is begin thinking about that kind of an idea, because let me tell you something, if it wasn't for that experience, I would never be where I am today. I would never have the opportunity to even lead this webinar for you. And I think it's really important to note that during this time specifically, Indeed has a lot of really great resources for you to make sure that you're covered. So for those of you who might be new to Indeed or, or if you've only you know, searched our site a couple of times in the past, um, I do want you to know that um, we are more of a job search engine right than a static board. So this is good to know. Any single, any company, right, that has come to uh, the internet and posted a new job, um, we automatically will go out multiple times a day, gather that information and bring it back into our, our, our site so that we create a one-stop shop for all things looking for a new job. So when you come to Indeed and you begin typing in that what field and that where field, that's where those jobs are coming from. I want you to also know that Indeed is, an, is a great place to read company reviews, learn about the culture and values of companies by clicking into their actual microsites is what we call a company page. And it's also gonna be a really great place for you to be able to upload your resume because pro tip, I don't know if you know this, but a lot of companies pay us backend access to actually have uh, access to our resume database. So if your resume is up there, they're going in and they're typing in keywords of characteristics they're looking for in candidates. And they're then reaching out first to let you know, hey, we have a position and you seem like the right type of person. So if you haven't done that yet, go to Indeed, create a profile, upload your resume so that recruiters can find you simultaneously to you going out and finding jobs. Now, something that I want to address, and I want to be very human about this, right, is, is that I know job hunting is daunting. I know that interviewing can be the worst. We've all been there before. Um, even those uh, Indeedians on the call today, right, we've all been, we've all been candidates in the past, um, and that's a lot to take in. And it can be really hard to, you know, come off as authentic um, in an interview when you're really nervous, um, and that's normal. But what I want you to know um, that is that there are a couple of tricks that you can employ to really build up your confidence. Um, and I'm going to run through them for you now. The first thing that I want you to know, and this is through research that we've done at Indeed, and especially with, you know, the clients that we work with who, you know, have their jobs on our site, they get nervous in the interview process as well. Um, you know, recruiters have some pretty significant deadlines to meet. Oftentimes they're recruiting for multiple different types of people. Um, and they have a, a pretty grand pressure to find the right fit. Um, so I want you to remember that. I think something that you can do as a candidate is to walk into an interview and I want you to bring a warm, inviting tone to the conversation because it's really gonna impact how you're perceived and it's gonna set the tone for the rest of the conversation. Now, what I wanted you to be aware of is that there are multiple different types of job interviews and I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run through them with you very quickly. Um, so the first one that you can see here that you might expect is called a screening interview. Um, those are typically pretty short. Sometimes they last, you know, either 15 minutes, a half hour, it could vary, but these are usually just qualifier conversations that take place over the phone um, to deem whether or not you have the skills or maybe even the personality that would be a fit for the organization. This then will typically determine whether or not you move on to the next round. Now, behavioral based interviews are very common. They're probably ones that you've seen in the past. And they are typically the ones that kind of goes something to the tune of, tell me about a time when you've overcome a challenge or tell me about a time when this. Um, and those are pretty standard um, within the HR space in terms of you know, the types of questions that are being asked. That can lead into a competency-based interview, which is very similar to a behavioral-based interview, um, but it's actually rooted in a specific competency um, that recruiters are trying to get to the heart of. So for example, if as a recruiter, I'm really interested in finding people who um, really excel at compassion, um, one of the questions that I might ask is, okay, well, tell me about a time that you have offered unsolicited help to a teammate and how has that impacted your relationship or the business? 
right? It's because I'm looking to get um, very specific for a specific type of competency. Um, then of course you have panel interviews. Um, this is going to be when a group of people from an organization are together at one time to ask you questions. And then of course we now have open interviews or hiring events, which are typically gatherings where multiple recruiters from the same company will join on site and then interview multiple people at one time. Now, we understand that you are in the midst, uh, well, really, we're all in the midst of working virtually. Um, everyone's at home right now. So we expect uh, that in the coming weeks, maybe even in the coming months, a lot of the interviews that you're gonna be embarking upon are gonna be through video. So I wanted to offer you some insight and some tips here uh, that I think would be really helpful for you. Um, the first thing that I want you to be aware of and really embrace is that environment is everything. It's really important to make sure that your space is clean, that you have a quiet place to take the call from, and that it's well lit. Um, a personal recommendation, if I might, um, sit in front of a window. Natural light is your friend. Think about when you're FaceTiming with someone or when you're trying to get like that perfect like video selfie for your Insta story, same lighting applies. It's going to make you look more awake and it's going to make you feel more confident when you're actually on the call. I wanna make sure that your internet connection is really good, that your audio is working on your computer, your webcam is good to go. These are all things that you can test ahead of time. And when I think of a clean space, I also am referring to things like your desktop. If you are gonna be sharing your screen in any way, make sure that you don't have any you know, bookmarks that you don't want people to see um, and that your desktop is cleaned up so that you can write just kind of Leverage that to your benefit to showcase, right, that you are, right, you have organized thoughts, organized space, organized mind. Um, and then it's, of course, really important to be dressed for the role that you're interviewing for. And then you want to make sure that you have a pen or a notebook handy, as well as a copy of your resume, so that if the employer that you're talking to has specific questions about experience, you can easily glance down and take a look. And of course, make sure that all of your, all of your devices are on silent, because we all know that we get pinged quite often. Now, we're gonna then spend the rest of our time talking about before the interview, during the interview, and then after the interview, and some tips that I have for you that I think could be really helpful in these arenas. I'm a very, I'm a big believer, a huge proponent in preparation. It's really important, you all, that you need to get your homework done, spending time educating yourself about the employer and about the role. What I want you to do is, is that when you come across the job description, I want you to read it a couple of times. Um, a good job description is gonna have really important information in it regarding not just the role itself, but the company and what it's like to work there. Um, there are things that are easily you know, missable there. So I want you to go back and just make sure that you, you know, there, there are no holes. Um, but if the job description in and of itself doesn't provide you uh, the grand amount of detail that you need to make a decision, what I want you to do is make sure that you're researching the company, leverage Indeed for this, when you go to indeed.com, uh, one of the things you can do is at the very top left, you're gonna see a link for company reviews. This is a great place to go in and actually type out the name of a company uh, if you're wanting to actually learn about them specifically because within that page on Indeed, they're gonna have things like videos and photos about life at the organization, reviews about what people uh, say their experience has been like. We actually have community forums now where you can see what other questions people have asked about what it's like to work there. We're starting to aggregate even more data around what it's like to interview places, what benefits are available. There's a whole list of really great features that are available for you there and we're, we're innovating it all the, all the time. But this is also a great time to go to Google, type in the name of the company, go to their corporate career site um, and take a look, right, to see what they have there, if there's any information that might be missing. And if this is a retail type of a position, once the world kind of reopens again, right? Dress for the part and walk in, say hello. Maybe if it's a restaurant that you've eaten at that you feel like you would be a great fit for to work at, go in, introduce yourself and begin that, that communication that way, okay? Now I want you to make sure that you're considering the role itself and whether or not the company has benefits that are gonna meet your needs. Uh, I think the first thing to really kind of talk about are salary requirements. Uh, at the end of the day, we all work because we have to. Um, and right, if we didn't need to work, we didn't need to earn money, we all be on an island living life 
very, very joyfully somewhere. So it's okay to inquire about salary. We are encouraging uh, employers all the time to make sure that they have salary information available on either their website or in their job postings. But if it's not, I think that it's completely appropriate that maybe in the second interview, you can ask for what the salary range of someone in that role might be. It might not be a direct, hey, how much is this position paid? But asking about a salary range is completely fair. I want you to make sure that from a benefits perspective, right, you're, you're getting offered exactly what you're looking for. Um, you know, to some, an amazing benefit might be childcare services. To others, it might be education reimbursement. But go through and look to see, right, what benefits that company offers. And then that could maybe help you make the decision if the role or that company is right for you, um, right? Are you able to work the required hours that are being uh, asked of? Uh, is transportation going to be an issue to get to and from work, right? Do you drive? Are you relying on public transit? And then of course, are you required to do any physical labor? If you can't lift anything heavy, it's good to know that up front. It's always a good idea to have printed copies of your resumes as well. Um, I usually like to have around five on me on good paper if your budget allows for that. And it's always great to carry those in some sort of a professional portfolio um, or a folder that's gonna keep them you know, nice and flat and safe um, and protected from any element right, that you might be walking outside of. But make sure that you have these available and ready if a, an employer asks one of you and needs one right away. I want us to really kind of embrace this idea of practice, um, right? Um, preparation is gonna be key. I would encourage you to put together a 30 second to a one minute pitch as to write um, who you are, what you're interested in, uh, what, your, what professional interests you have. Um, you know, are you good with data and numbers? Are you more creative in nature? I think being able to kind of hone in on this and really articulate the kind of work that you're looking for um, is gonna be really important. And then, you know, of course, we want to make sure that you're prepared to answer questions um, that are going to be asked for in the interview. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples of, of what those are. Um, and then, of course, I want, you to, I want you to prepare questions back to the employer as well. But the one piece of advice that I want to offer you is to think of maybe three to five stories that you can tell in an interview that could span multiple different types of questions. So when you're prepping, and you're creating these stories you're, or you're thinking of these experiences that you've had at work that have been meaningful, I want you to think of things like, you know, is it maybe um, a challenge that you've overcome? Is it a project that you've won an award for? Maybe it's a, you know, a group that you've started that you're really proud of or a mentor that you've connected with. If you can think of stories that speak to experiences that you've had, then the actual question itself matters a little bit less and you'll be able to flex a little bit more fluidly into how you're answering the question and not trying to remember a script or anything, you know, some sort of a memorized uh, response for those types of questions. So that's a great tip that one of my mentors gave me that I've used and it's very, very helpful. So then how can you apply all of this uh, to the actual interview itself, right? This is your time to shine. Um, and I really want you to feel confident and graceful in your interview because I can confidently tell you that if you have been selected to come in for an interview, you deserve to be there. You deserve to be in that chair and they want to hear what you have to say. So let's talk about a couple of things. Um, I think that being polite to everyone involved is necessary and key. I know it kind of sounds right like a no brainer, um, but, the security guard that you, that you interact with when you walk into an interview, the receptionist that you, you know, touch base with or check in with, the hostess who you greet when you walk in, the bartender, whoever it might be that you are introducing yourself to at very first, know that the interviewer is probably going to go up to them afterwards and ask what that interaction was like. So I just wanna make sure that, that that's kind of in, in your mind as well. And another pro tip that someone gave me, if you actually do get to an interview and you get really nervous, go into an interview and do what's called a power pose. Quite literally, you could Google power pose interview and whether or not that's taking a Batman stance or going full on Beyonce to feel good about yourself, there are literally studies that show when you do that, it allows you to kind of psych yourself up and feel really good about the interview because we want you to go and feel confident. Google that, trust me, you're welcome. 
Here is a, here's a list of some common interview questions that we do see, um, right? So of course, right, I'd say, tell me about yourself. It doesn't need to be a, a, an open the floodgates, right? You don't have to tell them your full story, but you can give them insight in, into who you are as a person and what you're interested in. But the one on this list that I really wanna talk about is the why do you want to work here? Um, so one of the tips that I can offer you here that's been very helpful for me in the past is when you're asked, to, when you're asked why you wanna work for this company, um, be sure to have researched that company's values or their mission statement. And then what I want you to do is I want you to describe characteristics about yourself that match them. Okay. I want you to show that you've done your homework on who they are as a business and why you personally are bringing to the table characteristics or experiences that are going to match that and augment it for them and have it ultimately be mutually beneficial. When you're able to do this, it's a great way to kind of build that relationship and it's going to allow you to stand out from other people. So take a look at the rest of this list um, and know that, and this is gonna be recorded by the way and sent out. So if you need to come back and refer back to this, you can. We also have these listed in our job guides available on the website as well. If you're looking for a more structured approach, this is called the STAR method. Um, it stands for situation, task, action, and results. This is gonna be where you can kind of craft a very, very specific narrative about something that you've worked on. So what's the context of your story? Uh, what was your role in that specific situation? What did you do? And then what did your actions lead to or what results came from this? This is a great way to be able to showcase those efforts in a very structured way. Now, this is, I feel is very important for us right now, especially in the, the economic climate that we're facing. I want you all to know that regardless of the position that you've held in the past, I don't care if you've worked in a hotel, in a retail space, uh, in, uh, in a corporate environment, right, uh, as a public speaker, it doesn't, doesn't matter. We all have transferable skills. Um, so, you know, if, for example, right, you've come from a, a customer service or retail, a flight attendant background, I want you to know that you have really great experience that can be used in so many different places, right? That would speak to, right, strong communication, sometimes problem solving, customer service. Um, if you've worked in a restaurant before, your, the POS system that you use to input orders and to manage your business, right? That speaks to technology literacy, analytical thinking and adaptability. Same thing for corporate roles. So I want you to identify again, right? Those experiences that you've had that you're really proud of. And then I want you to think about how you can apply those same skills in other industries and have confidence in knowing that those really are worthy experiences that you've had. And they can be very beneficial to other companies, even if you do come from a non-traditional background from what that company is typically used to. And what I want you to know too is, is that gaps in employment exist and they happen. In fact, um, in the US alone, about 90% of working people say that they've had a gap in their uh, employment in the past. So right, if you've left to be maybe a caretaker for someone, you were laid off, maybe you were just let go from your job because it wasn't a match, or you just took time off for personal interests, I think that being open and honest about these things is going to be very important for you. Um, but at the same time, right, you don't need to go into uh, right, uh, significant detail about it, but having an honest conversation is going to show humility. And maybe even talking about things that you worked on during that employment gap could showcase then how you would, would employ them when you're actually then enroll in your new job. Ask thoughtful questions. Everyone loves to talk about themselves, but here's something to kind of think about. The more questions that you end up asking the interviewer, the less you actually have to talk in an interview. And it allows the interviewer to see that you are being very mindful about your approach to this position and that you've done your research. So take a look at some of these questions here, again, available afterwards, available in all of our career guides, but this could be a great way for you to showcase um, specific interest in the role in a way that allows them to talk to you and creates more of a conversational tone in nature. And then following the interview, it's very important for everyone to follow up. Make sure that you send um, a really nice email thanking the interviewer for their time in a timely fashion. Make sure that you start with the name of the interviewer, right? Touch base on topics that you actually talked about, which will allow them to remember who you are and exactly what you can bring to the table. Uh, brevity is key, so make sure that you keep it short. Um, and you know, close a letter with your name and your contact information. And make sure, of course, that you uh, check that note for, for typos. 
A great tip that I once learned from a colleague of mine is to proofread your email from the ground up. So start from the very bottom and then kind of move upwards and read backwards. And it'll be much easier for you to catch typos or mistakes because it's not the, not the way that our brain typically reads. So um, that could be something that could be great for you. But when you're actually going through and writing the follow-up, this is an example kind of in detail about what it could look like. Something else that I could offer you as well, if you do have time or if the situation allows, maybe bring a blank card with you and on your way out, or maybe once you get down to the lobby, maybe you write these things out with your own handwriting and then leave it with the front desk or ask if you can drop this back off again in your right back up to the, to the office that you interviewed at. It's a really great way to show a timely response with gratitude in a personalized fashion in your own handwriting. So if you haven't done so already, uh, I want you to go to Indeed, create your free account, upload that resume like we talked about, browse positions that are available for you in that what field or in that where field. There are a series of great filters on the left-hand side that will allow you to filter out, uh, you know, if it's part-time or full-time, if it's salary expectations or current companies that are hiring. It's a great time to set up job alerts as well. So we can do some of the heavy lifting for you and provide you email digests with new jobs that are available that we think may be a fit. Uh, and then of course, we want you to research organizations and read reviews and really get a sense of what it's like to work there. And we're gonna to continue to innovate that product platform for you. We have, we're gonna be taking all this on the road with us. So go to our website to be able to look to see what our on-site job market events will look like. Of course, once the economy kind of resumes, um, this will be something really great that you can be a part of. But that kind of concludes what I wanted to present for you today. I wanted to make sure that we uh, have time for questions. We've had a couple that have come through. Um, I have my amazing Indeedians uh, here on the line, Brandy and Nikki as well, to help answer some of these questions. I see that some of them have come through for them. But any questions we didn't get answered, please go to Indeed Community, ask those questions. We have uh, you know, people who are on staff to answer those questions for you and we'll do our best to make sure that we accommodate. So um, uh, I believe, so this first question is, you know, how is interviewing impacted by uh, coronavirus? Uh, Brandy or Nikki, I think this would be a great, a great question for you if you'd like to take it. I'm happy to jump in. Thanks, Taylor. Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, there may be multiple implications of this virus on the job search or interview process. Uh, one would be that employers may pause hiring temporarily. It's possible that you had a great interview a couple weeks ago, but you just aren't hearing back because the company is trying to figure out what to do right now. And although most companies are working on a plan of action at the moment, uh, there are many that need additional employees to help respond to this crisis. A lot of these jobs are in the healthcare and public health fields, but there are others in different industries like communication professionals, social workers, uh, and technicians. So I'd recommend keeping a close eye on Indeed for these positions. And if employers are hiring, you may be asked not to come on site for an interview, but to do a phone or video interview uh, like we discussed earlier. So you can find more information about remote interviews as well on the career guide. And the, the most important thing to remember is that you should be kind to yourself right now. This is a stressful situation and it's understandable that you may not be as rested or as polished as you would want to be under normal circumstances when you're searching for a job and interviewing. Uh, taking breaks to clear your mind and you know, video chatting with loved ones are a few ways to ease tension that you may be feeling. And again, if you'd like information specifically about navigating the job search amid COVID-19, you can visit our coronavirus job resources page at go.indeed.com slash COVID-19 resources. And we'll be doing a webinar specifically on that topic on 331. Uh, and remember, again, you're not alone and we're here to help you. Okay, our second question is, um, how should one go about sharing one was laid off in a previous position? Well, got one of our recruiter on the phone, so uh, 
Nikki, what is um, what do you think is the best approach for someone maybe who has been laid off or let go in the past? Well, thanks so much, Taylor. Um, ultimately, want to start by just saying when I get on the phone with candidates, um, I actually probably will have a more traditional or standard question of, of truly, you know, walk me through your resume, letting you, the candidate, drive this conversation and helping just articulate the strengths and the uh, ways you contributed to your previous roles. So I may not call out anything specific in regards to length of time because I really want the job seeker to own their experience, their narrative as they tell me why I should consider them for the role. All that being said, though, there are some great talking points in regards to um, being honest and making sure you, uh, you know, tell that accurate story. So um, in regards to a layoff, if it was a large restructure, there could be simple statements um, in regards to sharing to your recruiter. There was a restructure within the organization and unfortunately my role was impacted. Uh, you could also talk about how the business was going through uh, changes and there was no longer uh, work to sustain my position and that helps give you um, talking points in regards to a big uh, instance where a, a large population was impacted at your at your company. But I hope that these are some talking points that help and again I, I am always excited to hear you tell tell your story and truly be um, the advocate for why you should have um, the role that we're connecting on. And you know, if I could just add to that really quick, I do think that there is something really uh, wonderful about someone who can share a, a tough experience or a, a challenging life experience with humility and, and talk about it in a way that they've been able to learn from it. I certainly know that, you know, the, I've had friends in the past who, you know, maybe were let go from positions for performance related reasons or something like that, but that doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you're not qualified for another role. I think it's a great opportunity for you to be able to showcase, you know, maybe a mistake that you made, how you grew from it, and then how you're going to employ that moving forward. Uh, Nikki, I would, I would assume that as a recruiter, you probably would appreciate that transparency. Um, and for those of us who have experienced that in the past, it's going to only allow you to feel more authentic when you're actually having the conversation. Absolutely. And again, with the statistics of, of you sharing before, Taylor, of 90% um, experience in a gap or, you know, that could relate to being laid off or other instances, um, being able to, to show that humble and, and again, rising and sharing your story. Absolutely. I love the articulation there. And we will continue to face, you know, challenging situations even in a role once hired. So knowing that someone can navigate that and grow from it is definitely a positive. Mm. All right. So the third question that we have is, um, what do you suggest when your mind goes blank during uh, an interview? Good question. Um, and then what if you're uncomfortable looking someone in the eye for the entirety of your answer? That is a good question. So uh, first and foremost, I would like to address that we've all been in this situation before. Um, interviewing can be very uh, uncomfortable. I think that when you are in a high stress situation like an interview, right? I mean, cause it's a lot to, to, to take back. It's okay to ask the individual to repeat the question or quite literally say, you know what? That's a really interesting question. Do you mind if I take just a, a minute to, to formulate my thoughts around that? I think that it's much better to pause and take that time than it is to try and come up with something that is not true or is inauthentic. So right Therapeutic pauses are very important in many different situations. And uh, that would be an example of one of them. Um, I think that, you know, when it comes to nonverbal, uh, you know, communication, such as eye contact, I think that, you know, being able to look someone in the eye for enough time to for them to recognize or register that you're address you know, addressing them specifically uh, is, is important, but I don't think it needs to be a staring contest. Um, and so, uh, you know, something else that you could do too, I actually learned this in, uh, from, from my uh, executive speaking coach is, is called guide posting. So if you're wanting to give a couple of, of answers, uh, or if you have an answer that maybe is multi-pronged, you know, actually non-verbally signing, you know, this is the first thing that I did. This is the second thing that I did. This is the third. Um, that's a way for you to kind of use your non-verbal body language to lean into conversation without having to look someone directly in the eye the whole time. That's something that has helped me in the past. Um, so some things that you might be able to try. Um, so I hope that that answered uh, your question. 
Um, and then uh, the last question here is, um, you know, of all these, you know, all these questions are great. Thanks. Um, but I think another big thing is nerves. So especially if you've been employed for a while, there's a lot of pressure on each interview. Um, and I know I often find myself thinking of nerves and how they show. Um, and I don't know, I just don't know how to be more comfortable with myself in an interview. Any tips or suggestions, um, uh, whether before the interview, during the interview, uh, to make my nerves a little less prominent? Um, Nikki, I'm going to ask you for to lean into this one as the recruiter. Um, you know, perhaps what are some things that you do that uh, you feel put candidates at ease, or what are some maybe additional some additional things outside of power posing that I mentioned uh, could help out? And and let me be the first to even share. You know, I was nervous as I was getting ready for this event, and and I know it might sound simple and and very, um, you know, easy, but you know, being prepared telling yourself that it's okay to be nervous and just taking some deep breaths and trying to calm yourself. Um, I, I know you might hear read that we can really own our feelings. And again, I don't mean for this to sound obvious or too simplified, but it is actually what really helps and works for me. Uh, whenever I approach a situation where I know I'll be in a, in a large setting, or even if I talk to a very senior level stakeholder where there's no need to be nervous, I just have to tell myself almost my own little mantra of, of you know, it's okay, calm down, take a deep breath. Again, us being able to own our feelings. Um, and again, I know I know this sounds simple, and um, but it truly can help. I also want candidates to know that while you may feel nervous, please know this is your time to interview the company and the opportunity as well. You should feel confident that you've been identified to come in and really be, again, truly considered for the role. And so I want you to feel empowered to know that this is your time to interview the company and opportunity as well. So maybe that can also help um, put you in the driver's seat a little bit and help calm those nerves down because it's it's for you to understand if this could be that right next um, career adventure for you as well. And, and of course, if Taylor or Brandy have anything else to share, but um, it, it's an exciting journey. I know it can be adrenaline and nerves, but just note that some simple mantras, taking some breaths, wearing your power outfit, wearing something that makes you feel comfortable, um, going into the big interview will, will all be things to help support you on that journey. Thank you so much. I think that's great advice. So that's our dog and pony for everyone. Um, I sincerely appreciate everyone joining. Um, and I just want to reiterate on behalf of my amazing colleagues here uh, and myself, we know that uh, it's, it's a, a very stressful time right now. Um, but Indeed is an, an amazing position to continue to help you through this. Um, you know, we have actually seen an uptick in searches on our site. Um, and a lot of employers that you are very familiar with have come to us and said, what can we be doing to support people who um, need to find work right now? So we have really amped up our efforts. We just were addressed by our CEO quite literally the hour before this call. I um, mean, we feel very confident that we will be not just leveraging existing resources we have to help you, but we are in the process of um, expediting production on other resources that are going to be really, really significant for you in your job hunt. So reach out to us. Uh, I'm available on LinkedIn. Feel free to reach out. Um, anything I can do to help you, I certainly know I will. And I, I speak on behalf of my, my colleagues too. So Brandy, I'll let you uh, wrap us up and then we'll bid everyone adieu. Great, yeah. Uh, just a reminder that if you have any other questions, you know, please feel free to continue posting on the Indeed community thread and our team will continue to answer them there. Uh, thank you again for tuning in and best of luck in your job search. Have a great day, everyone.